From KUNC and the NPR Network, this is In the NOCO, a daily slice of Northern Colorado news and happenings. It's Friday, January 12th. I'm Erin O'Toole. On Monday, we celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. A nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. That's a line from Dr. King's 1967 speech titled Beyond Vietnam. It's a window into his fuller legacy, one that wasn't just defined by peaceful protest and calls for unity. He also critiqued capitalism and American imperialism. Now, we've come a long way in understanding King's life and work. The federal holiday bearing his name has become an annual tradition celebrated across the country, but it wasn't always this way. In fact, a state law to honor Dr. King's birthday wasn't passed in Colorado until 1984. It took years of work at the hands of former state lawmaker Wilma Webb. KUNC senior managing editor Stephanie Daniel spoke with Webb a couple of years ago about her efforts. Why did you feel it was important to have a day set aside to celebrate Dr. King? As most people know by now, Dr. King was one of the greatest Americans that we have ever had that has ever lived. And so what he was doing was all good for making America better. He actually changed the direction of our country, which was going in a poor direction, a bad direction, where we had segregation, uh, where we had uh, people that were unemployed and underemployed who couldn't get jobs because of discrimination. And he lived his life and he gave his life to make those corrections as best as he could. And I was particularly moved by the 1964 and the 1965 Civil Rights Acts. So one was for accommodations and for doing away with segregation, and the other was for the right for everyone to have a right to vote. And so that was at the highlight of what he was doing. But further than that, when I was a young girl, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. came to Denver. He was the guest speaker at our church, New Hope Baptist Church, for me at that time. And then Mrs. Coretta Scott King also came here, and her first official speech was done here in Denver, Colorado, at uh, New Hope Baptist Church. And I was the organist, and she was the guest speaker, and we were friends ever since then. And so my relationship with the King family goes really far back. And so I felt that it was my duty and my responsibility to try to do whatever I could in terms of their values, in terms of their principles, in terms of their humanitarian efforts. And so I thought the least that I could do was to have him recognized not only for what he did but for all of the contributions of particularly African-American people at that time but as you know he was a person who was for making everybody better. Talk a little bit about what it took to get the bill passed. The efforts began in 1968 when Dr. King was assassinated on April the 4th, 1968, and there were all kinds of tributes and resolutions giving him respect and honor, but there were very few efforts to make his birthday an official holiday. At the time, State Representative Wellington Webb was the first one to carry legislation in Colorado, and he attempted three times, and on the third time, he did get it out of the House of Representatives, but it died in the Senate. And when I came in 1980, I carried bills in 1981, 82, 83, and 84, and each time it was really quite an ordeal in terms of educating the elected officials in terms of the negative thoughts about Dr. King, such as his being accused of being a communist, which he was not, in terms of people who were elected and promising to vote for it, and they did not vote for it, in terms of after it was adopted, At the time before it was adopted, I was a member of the Joint Budget Committee, which is the most powerful committee because it combines both the House and the Senate to write the state's budget. And the speaker at that time was not a supporter. He was an opponent of Dr. King's, and he would not reappoint me to that committee, and I had to go to court to be able to take my seat on the Joint Budget Committee. 
you and I are actually not in the studio. We're in City Park in Denver, and we are in front of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial, and your name is on there. So talk a little bit about this memorial. We're very proud of this Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. uh, Memorial Monument because of what it means, first of all, and then second of all, for whose shoulders he stood on and for his shoulders and their shoulders and the predecessor's shoulders that we all stand on today. And if you'll notice the tablets surrounding this sculpture, uh, they give the history of African Americans from the beginning of slavery on up until the assassination of Dr. King. And they also have his remarkable, untouched quotations that he used throughout his life to improve humankind. On Martin Luther King Jr. Day, there is a maraid here in Denver. What is the maraid? In 1985, when we were meeting as the commission for the holiday, since we had the holiday, we said, what are we going to do with it? And so we were meeting to establish and create activities and also the legacy of Dr. King that would be reflective of him. And so uh, we created our six days of activities to include every community in Colorado. And we were talking about what should we do on Martin Luther King Day. And so I said, well, we have to have a march. We have to have a march. And then we took it a step further because march implies that you have a purpose that there is a remedy and the remedy is being denied and it's not being acknowledged even though it's right and so we said well we have to celebrate the cel- the celebration of the abolishment of slavery, all of the efforts of the civil rights movement, the march from Selma to Montgomery, all of the people who have fought and who have worked on uh, making it possible for all people to be able to vote. So we have to celebrate that those things have happened. So that's when I came up with the term maraid and it got adopted, it's everywhere now. You've created quite a legacy from your Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. bill. What do you think when you see all of that? I'm happy for what has happened and glad and grateful for what has happened. I still think, just like Dr. King said, he said, I may not get there with you, but we as a people will get to the promised land. That was Stephanie Daniel speaking with former state lawmaker Wilma Webb in 2020. There are several events happening Monday for Martin Luther King Jr. Day, from the Maraid in Denver to a celebration of Dr. King's radical legacy at the Modus Theater in Boulder. Check our show notes or head to KUNC.org for more info. That's it for us today here on In the NoCo. We'll be back with you next week with more of what's happening in Northern Colorado. Our theme music was composed by Colorado artist Robbie Reverb. Special thanks to Stephanie Daniel for today's show. Robin Vincent is our executive producer. I'm your host, Erin O'Toole. We'll see you next time.